are happy to welcome uh, Liga Velina and Lieva Wisne. Liga Velina is a media artist, illustrator, and graphic designer. She works with uh, various digital media, data visualization, virtual reality, 3D art. Liga studied new media art at Lepaya University and visual communication at the Latvian Art Academy, where she obtained a master's degree. Liga is currently studying a PhD in Latvian Art Academy. Jeva Vixne is a media artist that currently resides in Riga, lecturer in the Art Academy of Latvia, graduated virtual reality and smart technology master's program in Wittsdemen, University of Applied Science, please excuse me if I <laughs> mispronounce it, working with uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, biometric data, photography, digital image, video performance, photogrammetry. Topics of interest, technologies, perception, mental health, alternative interfaces, virtual environments, artificial nature. So uh, I welcome you and uh, they um, will talk about representation of historical events in virtual reality. So the conversation on museums, this morning we had very interesting uh, interventions on museums. We'll continue with uh, your research. Uh, that will deal with museums and virtual reality. And uh, I welcome you, and I don't know in what order you want to intervene, and uh, uh, I give you the floor. Just uh, asking you if you can uh, be precise with the time, so to have time to open a discussion around your research. Thank you so much. Okay, just Thank a test. Thanks, can you hear us? No, hopefully. No. Yes, yes, we can hear you perfectly. Great. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share the slideshow. Okay. Yeah, thank you for introduction. So Eva and me, we are artists, developers and lecturers as well. And today we will tell about specific ed educational tool we made in collaboration with other artists, social anthropologists and historians. So yeah, so let's let's start. <laughs> So, along with technological developments, museums are looking for new ways to represent information and interest visitors, including youth audiences, through innovative techniques. And one of the new promising technological methods is virtual reality technology environments that allow you to learn complex historical topics through a combination of first-person view, 360-degree video, or constructed three-dimensional space, light, surrounded sound, and narrative combination through interactive empathetic experience and virtual reality technology has been available uh, to the general public uh, recently therefore the development of this type of educational products not only in latvia but also internationally is re relatively new practice therefore there are few studies and compilations on examples of educational products of this kind the aim of this article is to explore how to transfer uh, historical knowledge through understanding and empathy with the help of virtual reality technology to young audiences regar regarding the complex cultural and historical heritage. And the creation of such cultural educational products and VR uh, technology can raise issues related to the limitations of the technology and to acceptance of compromise that are needed to succeed, precise use of artistic means of expression, accurate successful narrative creation and other prerequisites for the created content and to achieve a education product that conveys information by stimulating cognitive, affective and emotional aspects of perception, promotes interest in youth audience, includes artistic and content values, uses interactivity and user involvement, uh, promotes personal connection, sense of presence and uh, depictions, uh, a depiction of complex cultural heritage. So, yeah, we think it's necessary to pay attention to what methodology is used in current practices and uh, past practices and studies in, in Latvia and internationally are considered in this article, which realized the digital, uh, digitalization of historical and complex cultural heritage using environments created in VR technology as a learning tool, focusing on the concept of empathy and learning from empathetic experience in constructed staged environment. 
Article describes the creation of an educational virtual reality experience Lipke Bunker in cooperation between uh, us artists, representatives of Janis Lipke Memorial and social anthropologists of the, of the University of Latvia project mamators Elisabeth Greenblatt and Diana Popova. In this context of the article, the issues of interdisciplinary cooperation is raised as a prerequisite for the creation of successful educational product built in a VR technology. In parallel, case studies are described, taken as an example of the development of the environment, which include narration through environmental storytelling. In the VR book, Human Centered Design for Virtual Reality, Jason Gerald describes four prerequisites for the sense of presence. The illusion of being in a stable uh, space, incarnation, the illusion of physical interaction and social communication, emphasizing that being present does not necessarily mean imitating direct reality. These prerequisites will be considered further in an article describing Lipke Bunker virtual reality experience. And the trailblazer of complex di digitalization of heritage using VR technology in Latvia <clears throat> is the Janis Lipke Memorial, which was opened in 2012 in Riga. And uh, the action of the memorial focuses of uh, uh, educating the public about the contribution of Janis Lipke and his family to saving Jews during wor World War II. And the memorial building uh, designed by architect Zaiga Geil is located next to Janis Lipke House and Garden, where the bunker was built, thus giving the memorial even more symbolic meaning in the context of its location. In the center of, uh, in the, center of the memorial, as a part of the exposition, you can see a bunker representation, an open shaft, giving an opportunity to see the basement from the attic, giving awareness how it was possible to live long in such extreme conditions. And by making this bunker inaccessible to visitors only visible from a distance, the memorial stresses that its purpose is not to seek identification with the former inhabitants of the bunker, but to strengthen his historical consciousness. In 2018, in memory of Johnny Slipke, after Ines is under a novel, Boy with a Dog story about kept secret, the film The Mover was created, which, import, which is important to mention as one of the forms of the media, how the contribution of the Lipke family to Jewish rescues is re represented, as well as the first feature film in Latvian cinema dedicated to the theme of Holocaust. Collaboration with Janis Lipke Memorial started in uh, 2019 in the Riga International Film Festival, Riga U5 Goes VR Hackathon, where our team met uh, me, Liga Velinja, Eva Vixne, Kaspers Levalts, and Lauri Staube. And we chose the Lipke Memorial task to create an educational VR experience about the topics that the memorial worked with Holocaust, World War II, and Janis Lipke. And, uh, uh, as a result, the prototype was developed in uh, 24 hours and granted us the second place. The prototype called the Living Room provided an artistic VR experience that narrated the events in 1941 in Latvia through environmental changes. Three scenes represented different months, each reflecting the worsening war conditions. The immersive experience included surrounded sound, lighting, and thematic environment changes. And by the end, the user was left pondering the story's outcome, creating a powerful empathy-based immersion. It is important to mention this prototype because at, the same, at that time in Latvia, there are no analogs of VR products that contributed to the equation of historical events uh, through storytelling, uh, through an environment uh, and game form. Uh, during our hackathon development, we drew uh, inspiration from case studies that influenced our work uh, on Lipke's bunker. These included Enter the Room and Anna's Frank House VR, both offering a child's perspective on a war uh, from a first-person view. Enter the Room by Red Cross and Augmented Reality Experience transformed the nursery into rebel, emphasizing the trauma experienced by chil children during wartime. It effectively conveyed its message for environmental changes, lighting, sound, and narrative. In 2019, Anne Frank House VR allowed users to explore secret annex where Anne Frank and her family hid during World War II. 
This nonlinear narrative allowed user-driven interactions with, with touching objects, triggering narratives voiced by a woman representing Anne. And these personalized stories created an, uh, an emotional connection showcasing storytelling through the environment and objects. The first person view immersed users in the narrative, making them active participants. These experiences share the common theme of environmental storytelling, all while adopting a first person perspective. So, <clears throat> sorry, I'm a bit sick. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. the creation of a VR Lipke bunker. Uh, so, in the spring of 2020, following a successful hackathon, Jean Lipke Memorial representatives collaborated with us, media artists, to initiate the development of the first Lipke bunker VR experience. This linear narrative focused on three by three meter bunker environment where users could touch historical objects to hear personalized stories. The bunker design was based on Janis and Joanna's Lipke's son, Siegfried's or Zigis uh, Lipke, his sketch. Uh, and that is the sole historical visual evidence of the layout. So uh, you can see that on the top left. Um, this uh, original sketch and related objects can be viewed in the memorial exposition. So, gonna play a little video. Uh, so the video, a VR experience was exhibited in three by three room in the Lipke Memorial's underground floor. And the initial version story was written by Maya Mere Osha. And it featured three scenes, Janis Lipke's family yard with a shed containing the bunker, uh, that is the main central scene that VR interactivity and concluding in an abstract environment with a central object, a tree planted by Lipke in Israel in 1970s. It combined the roles of passive observer and active participant, emphasizing camera placement and interaction. Uh, me, uh, I provided the spoken narrative and we supplemented it by soundscape crafted by also us, including nature sounds, footsteps and dogs barking, conveying the urgency and danger of being in the bunker. Good. So this experience debuted in October 2020 uh, at the Janis Lipke Memorial and was recognized as innovative approach to heritage education in Latvia by social anthropologist Elsbeth Greenblatt. So uh, in autumn 2021, Janis Lipke Memorial in collaboration with social anthropologists of Memo Tour project Elsbeth Greenblatt and Diana Popova using qualitative research methods such as focus group selection and user-centered methods like empathy mapping, tested the first iteration of the VR experience Lipke Bunker. On the youth audience aged from 16 to 25, the experience was tested over a four-month period on four semi-structured focus groups, including a total of 18 participants. So after the testing of uh, the first version, uh, in the results of the study, Greenblatt points out to the first version uh, user experience specifically. Uh, she says that uh, it had disturbances of physical reality during the experience, the periodic exit of users from the attended area of the game, which accordingly affects the user's sense of presence and real reliability of being in the stable room. Greenblatt that also points to the need for user preparation and briefing before the experience. However, to the shortcomings, things. Complementary feedback was received that the VR experience differs from the usual form of museum visiting and cognitive processes with interaction uh, in the environment, audio narration, and that it creates emotional experiences, helping to better, more clearly perceive and understand new knowledge and historical emotional context. So. At the same time, the VR experience acted as an extension complementing the real-time museum experience, an exposition visit to the physical exhibition. The opportunity to see the suitcase in both environments reinforced the sense of presence, the role of the witness. The short spatial distance between the two versions of the suitcase as the study participants experienced in the VR and the memorial space as the connectivity between the past and the present. So based on these results of the focus group testing uh, and observed shortcomings, 
Uh, when developing the second version of the virtual reality experience, uh, we created a dedicated scene with user instructions and controls in the beginning of the experience, in parallel with specially designed and customized exposition in the memorial, where users' movement in physical space is limited to a designer chair that rotates around its vertical axis, created by Riga Design Factory by all the citizens. Even though movement is limited, that does not change the user's possibility of interaction and does not reduce the sense of presence in the virtual environment. As part of the development of the second version narrative, uh, the introduction is supplemented with a perso personified story from the perspective of Janis and Johanna Lipkasan Zigis about the start of the war, while including a metaphorical portrait of, uh, in an animated form. Uh, it places a more accurate representation of the narrator. Uh, the accompanying personal narrative fits the illusion of communication. In this case, uh, the narrator is a child. Uh, and so an additional scene behind the bunker is added, representing for the refugees going out back to the freedom. Uh, the second version of the virtual reality experience, Lipka Bunker, is getting closer to Jason Gerald's four prerequisites for feeling present, including the illusion of being in a stable space, the illusion of embodiment, the illusion of physical interaction, and the illusion of social communication. So it should be noted that currently a specialized museum pedag pedagogy program is being developed from the side of the memorial which assists and extends the experience and acquisition of knowledge before and after the VR experience. The museum pedagogy program is intended to coordinate with the general educational school teaching standard for the study of history and offer secondary schools within the framework of Latvian school bag program. Uh, the created educational virtual reality experience also aligns with the museum's values in promoting a civic society in which everyone is accountable for their fellow citizens. So, so conclusions. conclusions. Uh, virtual reality technology through first person view as an important element enables the user to be complicit witness, immerse themselves in the story, thus opening up opportunities to present history and knowledge of other areas through participatory and empathetic experience. And looking back on the first experience created in Riga uh, Goes We Are Marathon, the living room, and comparing it with the second version of Livke Bunkers We Are Experience in uh, 2022, they talked about Automatically about the same period of time and their main goal is to educate the user, promote empathy, maintain linear narrative form and environmental storytelling. However, the living room developed in a hackathon acted as a conceptual math, driving inspiration from available case studies based on artistic interpretation, a sense of events during World War II as a creative arti artistic proposition. proposition. We are Lipkis Bunker uh, collaborating with interdisciplinary specialists, including um, expanding through historical research and social uh, anthropologist Greenblatt's research acquires added value as a functioning tested implicit learning educational tool and uh, in the acquisition of complex cultural and historical heritage while still incorporating artistic and content values. And uh, a personal story created for a specific target audience in a virtual reality environment is one of the most important aspects of creating an empathetic experience. Being able to be in authentic space, hear a personal story provides an opportunity to authenticate and be, mo be a post witness. Choosing Janis Lipkis' son Zigis as the main narrator makes the experience more relatable to young audiences. The three-dimensional environment allows for hyperrealism, but bringing in human figures can create an undesirable effect. We emphasize the deliberately metaphorical use of artistic means and narration of virtual reality experience via Lipka Bunker through the environmental change uh, as successful without the use of realistic three-dimensional animated figures in the environment, uh, thus avoiding sorry, thus avoiding the effect of uncanny valley. We can also observe such metaphorical artistic approaches and narrative through the environment in the case studies mentioned above. 
When it comes to the representation of complex heritage through various digital forms, constructing environments interpreted by artists and historians will always be a balancing between ethical boundaries. The choices of the methods of representation is the mutual compromises adopted by the representatives of the sectors involved with regards to the artistic means. Ethical limits and effectiveness can only be verified through focus group testing or by making the creative VR environment accessible to the public, thus giving and receiving feedback. Both initial instructions and the length and the design of the VR experience itself in the context of construction are of great importance. It is necessary to carefully evaluate how the structure of the story is uh, created in order to keep the user's attention so that it is guided through the experience in the form of narrator or visual or audible clues. Creating educational virtual reality experience about complicated historical events can be quite challenging in all dimensions before aspects, but nonetheless very rewarding, especially seeing the interest of the youth to visit this exposition being a strong testimony to that. Thank you. Uh, here we will provide um, some list of literature. Uh, if you're interested, yes, in more of the UX testing with the focus group, you can find uh, Greenblatt's master thesis. And also, uh, I would mention definitely uh, Rai Simonson's articles that are connected to digitalize, digitalization of um, museum uh, education. So uh, these are some internet resources and Thank you very much for your attention. These are our emails if you wish to maybe ask some questions or contact us later on. Thank, thank you. Thank you so yeah, much, thank Liga. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. I have a couple of questions, but I would like to ask uh, first who wants to make some question? Is there any question? Uh, I, I'll start. <laughs> Um, it was very interesting that you started by saying uh, that you were careful to look at the um, problems technology can give, no? It's like we, we, we didn't give for granted like the hype for technology that can be very dangerous, but you started by uh, moderating your... Uh, what were... Uh, difficulties that you didn't imagine you have encountered like in uh, in uh, uh, in the output of em of empathy that you were wishing to give uh, to the experiences um i would say that co what goes connected to empathy i don't think that there were any technical problems with the medium itself because vr has been proven uh, to work amazingly uh creating empathy uh but i guess uh, as as elizabeth also researched uh in in her master thesis uh these practicalities of the vr technology uh like breaking you know uh the virtual environment and seeing physical environment and other people and that means you feel observed maybe these kind of issues they unravel themselves only in the process uh, because before had we're both our artists that work with vr and we pretty much know how it works and what are the problems, but these kind of new issues, especially with school groups where you have several people, maybe they're also talking and pulling the person out of the experience, uh, I would say these were more challenging. Uh, but also as, as we've been working with this medium, I think for at least four or five years, both of us, um, I think we've understood that, yes, it is not a all solution to everything you know this medium has its drawbacks especially the fact that you're alone in there but it can be also used in a positive way uh, which i think uh, at least in this experience uh, is achieved so i hope that answers somewhat your question so much other other questions or um, i think it was very interesting your interve interventions also because of the intervention of this morning of Sudia Azzurro and uh, on the discourse on empathy 
and uh, what was and the different perspectives that were given yesterday by Wrighty Smith, uh, that I imagine you know very well, and uh, uh, and by Studio Azzurro, which is a different, very different sensibility and way of uh, connecting uh, through empathy and technology. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and we'll be happy to. Uh, to be updated on your research. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you.